My name is Josh and I'm a recovered uh, alcoholic and sex addict. And thank you for the opportunity to share today. Um, I felt led to share about, you know, how do we deal with loss in recovery? How do we, how do we deal with it? How do we overcome it? Um, and I guess really what was, I've never really, I never would have thought that I experienced a lot of loss in my life, but, um, I guess what inspired this was the loss of a friend a couple weeks ago and, and just how, and how that has impacted me, you know, so far. And, and it really was a good reminder that it's like, you know, maybe not all of us, some, maybe all of us, maybe not all of us, maybe you're here just looking for, you got some questions. Um, but it was a reminder of like, you know, the disease of addiction, you know, is, is a deadly disease. And it's like, it, it doesn't take time off. And it's like, you know, how do I, how do I combat that? It's like, I need to combat that with a spiritual solution. And I need to combat that with the power of God. I need to combat that with like increasing my connection to God. Because as I'm doing that, it's like, my addiction is always going to try and take me out. Um, and it was just, and it was just a reminder of that a couple weeks ago. And it's like, maybe for you, it's like physically, it will take you out you know, by taking, taking a substance or taking a drink. And maybe, maybe it's actually just going to take you out mentally. Maybe it's like your mind is just going to go out of control and you're going to be left with misery and depression and isolation. And it's like, and that's, and that's where that, maybe that's where your addiction takes you. Um, but when I found out the news, when I heard the news that my friend had passed, it was, I think there was a lot of shock that was there. You know, it was, I don't know. I, just, I like, I wasn't expecting it. Like, not, not that you ever expect it, but it's just like, I'm like, like him out of all people. It's like, it just, it completely blindsided me. But then all of a sudden I'm hit with these emotions. And it's like, for much of my life, what have I done with emotions? I've taken every emotion that I've had and I've stuffed it down, you know, anger, sadness, you know, even, even happiness you know, or joy to an extent. It's like, I've, I've stuffed that down, you know, because it's like, because it's like these emotions actually produced a discomfort. And I don't like, I don't, you know, I have this disease of ease and comfort that I just want ease and comfort. I just want things to be good. I just want to feel good. So anytime something would come around that made me feel icky or something that made me feel uncomfortable, you know, I would fantasize, I would act out, I would drink anything to just shut that down right away. So maybe you're here, I'm like, I get that. Or maybe you're here like, I'm being like, I got loads of emotions and I love to lead with those emotions. And you maybe have so many emotions for all the people in this room. And, and it's like being on either end of the spectrum isn't good. You know, like, I don't want, I don't want to be, I don't want to be stuffing all this stuff down but at the same time, I don't want to be leading out of this. I don't want to be leading out of my sadness. I don't want to be leading out of my frustration or my anger, you know, or my fear. I don't want, I don't want that to lead the way, you know, but emotions aren't bad. You know, like we, we see in our life lab book that it's like all emotions actually come from God, you know, and all emotions are God given. And it's like, and, and, and they can be good if they're used within a healthy realm, you know? So how do I do that? Like, how do I actually express sadness appropriately how do i actually express anger appropriately how do i actually express joy like how do i actually live within this realm you know and i think this process of recovery and this connection to god actually brings all that into um it, it brings it all into balance and i think the beautiful thing about being in recovery is when something like this happens i don't need to get off get knocked off my horse you know, I, that, this doesn't actually have to, this doesn't actually have, this doesn't actually have to take me away from my connection to God. You know, like it doesn't say, it doesn't take away the frustration. It doesn't take away the anger. It doesn't take away the sadness, but this doesn't actually, a bomb can go off beside me and I don't have to be affected. My relationship with God doesn't have to be affected now because of this. I don't have to fantasize. I don't have to drink because of it. But as I was reflecting this past week on this, you know, in, in the 12 steps um, of, of recovery, uh, you know, 
in the first step, you know, we, we, we hear about how we're powerless over something, you know, and that our lives have become unmanageable. The second step, it's like, you know, I became, you know, I came to believe that it's like God could restore me to sanity. And then the third step, it's like, you know, I turned my will and my life over to the care of God. You know, I turned my thoughts and my actions over to the care of God. And what I, what I was recognizing this past week for me, as I was reflecting on, on my relationship with this guy, because I was working with him, um, how did I really turn my will and my life over to the care of God in terms of this relationship? You know, the big book talks about, it's like when we live this life of self-will, it's like we're the director of the show. And that's what Josh does, you know? Josh sits in his little director's chair up on a little pedestal and everyone needs to do as I want them to do. But I'm not actually giving you guys a script to the play. Like it's 2021. You guys should just know what I want you to do, you know? And then when it doesn't happen, we all, like, we all get a little upset and people get a little bit, people get a little bit bothered. But I'm not designed to be running the show. I'm not designed to be the director. I'm just an actor and God's actually the director, you know, and, and that's what the step three is. The step three is I'm actually turning over that rule because I'm, I'm, I'm operating in a space that it's like, I shouldn't be doing that, but God is. So when I reflected on my relationship with this guy, I started realizing like, man, did I have, was I trying to be a director here? Did I have expectations? Was I judging being like, oh man, we have to be making this type of progress and this is how it needs to look like. And this is how it all needs to be. And if it's not, it's like, man, it's like, we're not doing it as I think it should be done. And it's like, hold on a second. Like, like all of a sudden I'm judging things through my eyes, th through my mindset, you know? And, and at his funeral, they, uh, they found his journal. And they read, they read some parts of his journal and, and they started reading, they started reading his questions to God and they started reading his prayers to God and they started reading his, his thoughts that he's putting down. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like, these are things that we had talked about. And here I am in my own broken, thinking I'm the director, thinking like, like, are we actually making progress? And it's like here's how he's progressing and it's like and i'm not even aware you know and 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 it's like who am i all of a sudden to make these judgments who am i to to start thinking oh this is worthwhile or this isn't worthwhile or is he getting anything out of it and it's like and i've realized that nothing is wasted in god's economy and josh you just need to get out of the way you just really need to be the director you really I said that impro I said that incorrectly. Josh, you need to get out of the way. I'm not meant to be the director. I'm just meant to be an actor in the play. And God sees the full picture. God knows what's happening. God knows where things are at. And just because it didn't look the way I thought it needed to look, doesn't mean it was of waste. Maybe, in fact, it was the opposite. Maybe it's the opposite that us on this call many of us do him it's like maybe we were that beacon of light to him in those final months maybe we were represented the spirit of god to him in his final months you know and not once after this not once did i say god thank you for this opportunity to know him thank you for this opportunity to work with him thank you for the impact he, he had on my life what did i fill myself with I filled myself with the should haves the could haves the would haves And like, really, Josh, it's like, what if you didn't cancel that last appointment with them? You know, what if, you're, what if your home life was okay that week and you put that aside and you, and, you, and you met with them? Maybe you wouldn't be in this scenario. What if I put in more time? Maybe what if I met with him more? Oh, hold on a second. That sounds like the director who's talking right now. Like that sounds, it's like I actually had a role to like change the outcome of this. But maybe this is how it was all supposed to be.
you know, and, and, and I, and I don't say that lightly because it's like, it's still, it's still very sad, you know, and it's still very, there's still a lot of frustration with it, but it's just about Josh having to step back and realize that my timing is not God's timing. And if I've, if I've actually turned my will and life over to the care of God, I need to trust God that he has things under control. I need to trust God that he's the one running this. <clears throat> and I, and I was thinking, you know, what else? I was thinking like, how else do we, how else are we affected by loss and recovery? You know, what if, what if all of a sudden we have a friend who relapses, you know, or what, or what if we have a kid who's struggling or what if, you know, we, we have a friend who just steps away from God or steps away from this. Like, like that's actually loss because it's like, now it's like, they're, they're, like they're, there's a disconnect there. And I, and I just, I've been continually realizing that it's like, I can't want it more than them. You know, I can't make it about me, but I actually need to let them be on their own personal journey. Cause remember God is the director, not Josh. You know, God is the one who's orchestrating all this. And my own personal, my own personal recovery, my own personal, you know, relationship with, with God is actually, that actually connects me to this power now. So what's, what's the one thing that I have in my toolbox that I can do? It's not about trying to meet with someone more. It's not about trying to convince them. It's not about trying to do any of these things. But I can actually pray for them. And actually pray that the power of God will come over their life. And they will have, they will have an awakening. They will have a realization and God will lead them in that process. You know, but it's not about me trying to come in and trying to, fo- and trying to force this. You know, I think about loss and recovery in the home life, you know, in, 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 in families and in marriage. And, and I remember when, when I came in and, And sometimes I might have a tendency to like, maybe this goes with uh, not suppressing the emotions, but and is she even on this call right now? No, she, okay. Is she on the call? Maybe, Joanne. So, so I remember the, for the first couple of months of my recovery, six months, even, even maybe longer, it's like, it's like, we're good now. Like, it's like, like that. Like, like that's done. Like, it's like, aren't, aren't you glad I'm, aren't you glad I'm back? Aren't you glad I'm here? And it's like, but she's reeling with the loss of what, what it was. She's reeling with the loss of this marriage and the destruction that I had caused. And it's like, she's learned, she's trying to figure out how do I cope with this? You know, she's trying to figure out, it's like, yeah, you say that you say that, but it's like, things aren't okay still. It's like, Josh, I don't trust you. You know, and she, that's her own process that she had to walk on or, 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 or walk through. And she kept saying this one statement. I had to look it up one day. And she just kept saying, I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. And it's one of those old sayings that I'm like, <laughs> I had to Google it one day. And it's like, it's from like New York City back in the 17 or 1800s when the apartments, they all had like the bedrooms were above each other. And what would happen is people would come home or they go to bed and it's like, they'd sit there. And they would take a shoe off and they drop it on the floor. And then you know that in a second, the next shoe is going to come off and it's going to drop on the floor. So you're always waiting for that next thing to happen. So to her, you know, my, my sobriety was never permanent. You know, because she was so used to this up and down, up and down, that she's just waiting for the other shoe to drop. And it's like, and because I'm doing that, it's like she's in this constant realm of change. And she has, she has, she's trying to figure out how to mourn that. How does she process the sadness? How does she process the anger? How does she process trust again? You know? And then there's, uh, and then there's on my side that it's like, I actually have to mourn. And I didn't recognize this at the time, but I actually have to mourn the loss of my old life. And it's like, it doesn't make sense. When, like, like, even as I say that, I'm like, well, that doesn't really make sense. Like, why would you mourn? the loss of your old life if you're in addiction or alcoholism or sex addiction or chaos creating or food like why would you like like that was horrible 
like like wh like why are you sad that you've left that but i've lived so long in that that that's what i know and even as destructive as that is it's like that's still what makes me comfortable and it's really going from I'm trying to think if it was mentioned the other week or not but it's like it's going from the short game to the long game and an, and an addiction and and in these illnesses it's like when i want something i'm gonna get it right now because remember i don't want to feel emotions so i'm used to that instantaneous effect and that's all i'm that's all i'm doing i'm just looking for something to just fill this to fill this void inside of me but coming into recovery all of a sudden it's like oh wow it's i'm not getting that instantaneous relief or i'm not getting that instantaneous effect it will come it there's promises that it will come but at the beginning it's just like you just got to focus on doing that next thing you know you gotta you gotta go to those meetings you gotta do your work you gotta you know do your do your bible reading you gotta do all these things and it's just like oh my goodness it's like what was it no it was john who said it last week or the week before that it's just like it, like is my investment in this even worth it right now you know because it's like it's like i'm not seeing the results why am i not seeing the results yet after one month one or month two or what whatever it is and it's like oh my goodness and all of a sudden my mind you know being broken being disconnected from the spirit of god actually starts thinking oh man my past life wasn't that bad i wasn't that sick Joanne wasn't really that upset with me. Well, the, so many people are way worse off than me. It wasn't that bad. And so what, so what happens now is my mind actually starts to work against me. And my mind is actually trying to bring me back there. And it starts to make, it starts to make the past look a lot more appealing. You know, and it's like, because I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in, I, I'm not actually experiencing the, I'm not actually experiencing you know, the promises of recovery, the promises of, of, the, of this new life. And, you know, in the big book, <coughs> it talks about, uh, you know, it talks about selfishness and self-centeredness. And it's like, it says like, that's the root of our problems. You know, it's like, I'm driven by a hundred forms of fear, self-delusion, self-pity, like I have hundreds of forms of this. That's what's feeding me. That's what I'm connected to. But the book also says this. The book also says, says that it's like my roots are going to grasp the new soil. You know, my roots are going to, my roots are not going to be connected to this self-pity, to this despair, to this self-seeking, to this selfishness. But they're actually going to be rooted to the power of God. They're actually going to be rooted in the fruits of the spirit that God offers, that it's the kindness, the joy, the patience, you know, the self-control, the gentleness, peace, serenity. And, <coughs> sorry. And, you know what, it's, those are the promises of recovery. Those are the promises of recovery that it's like, you know, it's like I'm living in this old house. And like my dad's cousin has a house over on, I don't even know if you want to call it. A, it's, it's a structure on the Quebec side outside of Chavo. And it's like from like the 1850s and you go in there and it's like over the course of like, 10 feet it's like there's a four inch difference in the floor and it's like it's sloping and everything else but it's like i live in these old houses with those rubble foundations and it's like you know i could go in and maybe i can try and patch a little bit of the wall here or do a little bit of tape or maybe i'm going to change a little bit bit of baseboard but really what needs to be done is i just got to rip this house down so we bring the excavator in and i'm not just ripping the house down because i don't want to build on that rubble foundation. I'm actually gonna put in a proper foundation, double walled if that's a thing, double rebar if that's a thing. And it's like, 
make it secure. And that's what Jesus offers me. That's what the promises of recovery, recovery offer me. But it's like, I'm going to be placed in a new foundation. And so much, like, I know at the beginning, it can be so difficult to even comprehend that this is where I'm at. Like, like what, like, I can't even think six months down the line, a year down the line, two years, five, whatever it is. I can't even think that far down the line because it's like, I'm so caught up in this. You know, how is it even possible that, it, it, it seems so impossible that it's like, I can have a new foundation. But if I, if I just keep moving forward, if I keep working on that connection to God, if I keep, you know, working this process of recovery, that's what will happen. That's the promise, you know, and we just need to keep at it. And that's why we have meetings like this, that it's like, we actually get to join with each other and be a support to each other. That it's not like me doing this on my own. Cause if I had to do this on my own, I'm screwed absolutely screwed i need the support of other people around me but my dependence doesn't rest on you and my depend my dependence doesn't doesn't rest on doesn't rest on me either my dependence rests on god you know and 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 when it seems overwhelming <coughs> when it seems overwhelming and it seems what's the point? And when it seems, oh my goodness, I can't make it this far or like, I'm never going to make it. It's because you can't. It's be, like, it's be, like on my own power, I can't. And I don't want to burst your bubble of power and self-confidence, but that's why I need the power of God. Because if I could have done this on my own, I would have done this on my own, you know, but I can't, but God can. And it's because of that, that I'm given new life. It's because of that, that, that these promises come true, that things that used to control me don't control me anymore. And that's the hope that, that's the hope that I live on. So thank you very much for allowing me to be of service today. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day.